You ever wonder why? Nigeria is often labelled as corrupt. But how did Nigeria become this corrupt? The root of corruption in Nigeria runs deep. And today, we are going to unravel how it all began before independence. According to George Santayana, those who cannot remember the past are condemned to repeat it. It feels like everyone going to government offices is just there to grab their slice of the national cake, right? In fact, recent report by the Nigeria Bureau of Statistics claims that in 2023 alone, the Nigeria Public Service received bribe of about 721 billion naira. And this is not just about the government workers alone. The business people are not let out of this. Government contracts are opportunity for private firms to make dubious riches. Billions of naira that should improve the education, the healthcare system, and provide quality infrastructures are siphoned by public officials. This is the Nigeria of our today. Trust me, understanding this will shift your perspective. But the point of this video is, is not to shift the blame of a country's rules to another. The fact is, every nation is a cause of its predicament and should hold itself responsible. Let's dive into how corruption came into Nigeria and who was behind it. Corruption came into Nigeria in three phases. First in 1914, secondly shortly after the amalgamation of Nigeria through trade profit and thirdly in 1955. Let's dive into revealing them in detail. Phase 1. To understand this, let's go back to 1914, when the British amalgamated both the Southern and Northern Protectorate to form the present-day Nigeria. And that was the first phase of corruption in Nigeria. I know, you are wondering why this was classified as corruption. This is it. Is forming a country without the different nationalities concepts not a corruption? This amalgamation happened without consulting the local ethnic group of Nigeria, if they want to be together. and. This has been one of the major problems Nigeria faced this very day. Which, if you are in Nigeria or someone who understands the Nigeria history, you will agree with this video. But you may be wondering, Nigeria being a multicultural, political and religious diverse people. And you may be wondering, why the British still choose to weld these different nationalities together? Right before independence, Nigeria was just like a business venture. The British was already running at loss in the northern part of Nigeria and also they couldn't afford the financing and the personal cost in running two different colonies in the same region. The overall objective of the British government, the British need to lay hold on the country abundant resources with minimal cost of exploitation. The second phase of corruption in Nigeria. Now fast forward to a few years after the 1914 agamation of both southern and northern protectorate, British contractors and traders introduce percentage profit into the Nigeria trade system. What is this percentage trade profit all about? This isn't just about fair profit. Percentage profit are extra profit contractors and traders are making outside the original profit. This may sound familiar, right? This system is pretty much the blueprint for corruption we see in contract and business deals today. You may want to know how, right? But this is how these dubious activities is being carried out. This is it. For instance, if Mr. A, who was a contractor, specialized in construction, he will approach Mr. B, who is probably a government official for a contract, to build a road at a certain amount of money. Mr. B will tell Mr. A to add an extra percentage to the cost of the contract, let's say about 10%, as his own reward for awarding the contract to Mr. A. This 10% extra cost on the contract will be given to Mr. B, who award the contract to Mr. A. After when Mr. A received the payment from the government or organization that awarded the contract. In fact, this is one of the reasons for the January 1966 coup that took the life of the Nigeria First Prime Minister, aka the Golden Voice of Africa, and some other prominent men in Nigeria at that time. This was how the second phase of corruption was introduced in Nigeria. The third phase of corruption. This was in 19. 55. The late Sadhana of Sokoto, Alaji Ahmed Bendu, tells the Nigerian British colonial secretary that if you want us, he was referring to the North, to be part of this Nigeria you have in mind, we want 50% of the seat in the National Assembly. Why in 1954, the South has won the majority seat in the National Assembly election that was held. The South won about 83, 83 seats, making it about 51. 23% of the 162 seats. Looking as if 
it is a tough ambition to achieve. But this was how it was overturned. In 1959, without any say so, conducted to determine the population of Nigeria, the British yielded to the demand of Ahmed Dubedlu and created more seats to make it 112 seats. In order to protect their investment, Ahmed Dubedlu only asked for 50% of the seats, but he ended up getting about 55.7% of the total seats in the National Assembly. This was the third monumental corruption that plagued the country, which is still bedeviling the country at this moment. The January 1962 coup was the aftermath of the massive corruption and the irregularities we continue after independence. So, what can Nigeria learn from this journey through history? But here is the real takeaway. Remember from the beginning of this video, I said this video is not to shift blame for the shortcoming of a nation, but Sometimes it is better to know and understand why you give in a certain way. The past has undoubtedly shaped the present Nigeria, but the part of change the future lies in Nigeria's hands. Let's imagine in Nigeria where public office is about service, not self enrichment. In Nigeria where business owners and contractors operate with integrity, fund meant for education, healthcare, and infrastructure are well utilized. This isn't just a dream or imagination, it is a possibility. But it starts with acknowledging the past and committing to a different path forward. Let's remember the words of St. Diana. Those who cannot remember the past are condemned to repeat it. Corruption may have been strategically planted to obstruct the growth of Nigeria, but it is now up to the Nigerians to uproot this now. Through fight for transparency, accountability, and integrity, Nigeria can transform its narrative from one of corruption to one of progress and prosperity. Thanks for watching. If you find this video insightful, please click on the like icon to like this video. And I would also like to know your opinion, what you feel about this video. And if you haven't subscribed yet to this channel, please click on the subscribe button to keep receiving impactful content for us.